Hi Stampers, this is Kathleen. Welcome to another video from my YouTube channel and blog. Today I wanted to do this cute honeycomb bee card. It's so easy to make. And I'm using the Dragonfly Dreams stamp set from Stampin' Up. And then I'm also going to be working with this honeycomb, excuse me, hexagon dynamic embossing folder. This is so cool. I really like these. We had our first one introduced in our Christmas catalog. It was a cable, like a sweater cable. And now this one came out and it just does a fabulous job of embossing. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need is a piece of basic gray cardstock, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, and a piece of basic black cardstock. This is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, a piece of Whisper White cardstock, three and a half by four and three quarters. You're gonna need a scrap of Whisper White for cutting out our bees. And then you're going to need a piece of Daffodil Delight that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And it, this is the one that we're gonna run through our big shot. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you how to do a um, what your sandwich should be on your Big Shot using this new type of embossing folder. Now you can do, you can run this through just uh, like you regularly would piece of cardstock, or you can, because this is so such going to do such deep embossing, you can also spritz this with water or spritz it with alcohol before you put it in the embossing folder. And what will happen is because the card or the fibers on the cardstock are wet, they will emboss a little bit deeper. It's not really necessary, but I'll show you the difference when you do both of them. Now your sandwich is going to be a little bit different for your Big Shot. You're going to use the Big Shot platform and then you're going to use the embossing folder and only one cutting plate. And that's because the folder itself is so thick. So then you would just run this through your Big Shot. And when you do that, this is what you get. Now this piece I spritzed with alcohol and ran it through. Um, it does seem to, when the cardstock finally dries, it's a little warped, and so you're going to have to play with it to get it to flatten back out again. But you can see the difference here. On this one, I ran it through dry, and on this one, I ran it through with the alcohol, and I think that you get a deeper impression. So if you can do it either way, just an option and to show you some differences that you could achieve. So then you're going to take this piece of, or the embossed card, and what we're going to do is we're going to sponge it with our Daffodil Delight ink. And all this is going to do is to help highlight and uh, make the design pop a little bit more. So we're just going to ink up our sponge and then just sponge all over. Uh, you can use as little or as much ink as you would like, and it will just highlight the embossing and give some dimension to it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it out randomly. Um, there's no rhyme or reason for how I chose to cut it out. I just decided to start cutting. So I just went up, following the lines on the embossing, and over, just doing my cuts as you go. And you can make this as random, you could give a pattern to it, it isn't really going to matter. Um, Every one might turn out a little bit different, and whatever you do with it is going to be fine. So you're just going to continue cutting everything out until you have your piece that looks like this. So this is the one that we're going to go ahead and we'll adhere to our cardstock. And um, so we're going to take that, and we're going to take our piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I'm just going to apply adhesive to the back of this 
and just adhere it to the white cardstock. I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you are, um, I would love it if you could give a thumbs up. If you currently subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's awesome. If you don't, I hope that you'll take the time to subscribe. I really appreciate um, all my subscribers. If you have a positive comment to give, I also like hearing those, so feel free to leave one. Um, what I decided to do here was to cut out this white area. I thought it kind of detracted a little bit, and it you know, makes lets the black a, a cardstock that it's mounted to show through, and I really like that little bit that it showed. If you're interested in purchasing any of the products that I'm using today, you can go out to my blog, which is uh, KathleenStamps.com, and you'll find a link right up here on top of the video. So now we're gonna, now we have our white mounted. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp my greeting make sure my stamp is right side up. Okay. All right, we'll see if I can do this without getting my head into the camera. All right, so we have our greeting. Now we're gonna go ahead and we'll mount this to our black cardstock. Come out a little bit wider here. So we're just gonna mount this. Make sure that it's nice and even. And then we'll attach this to our card base. All right. Now I'm going to grab a piece of white because I need another piece of cardstock for the inside of my card, and I forgot to grab that. So just a second. Okay, so we have our inside cardstock that we're going to use, and this will be cut at four by five and a quarter. Okay, now what I wanted to do on this is I'm going to stamp the B down in the corner for some added interest and then I'm going to also on my scrap I'm going to stamp the two B's that we'll be using on the card. So get our B stamp ready. And I'm just going to stamp him down in the corner like that. And then we'll also stamp two of them that we'll use for the card. All right. Now I previously stamped these and I've cut them out already so that we were ready to go. And all that I did to color in the yellow area is I just used my Stampin' Write marker and I used the broad tip. You can tell the difference. This is the narrow tip. This is the broad. And all I did was color in 
the areas where the B would have the yellow. Just like that. And I would do that to both of them. And then I cut them out. Now on the B that we're going to have on the inside of our card, I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to color him in. And then just for some fun, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around the B. Just to make the corner of the card or of the inside just look a little bit different. Alright, there we are. Now we have to apply the all important Wink Estella. And this is the clear Wink Estella. So I'm going to put it all over the wings and on the bee. Now it looks like that bled a little bit because I didn't wait long enough for the ink to dry so um, we'll just go with it but it is something that you really need to be careful about as you can see on this one it's not um, bleeding at all but I think it will still be fine and then you can just apply as much or as little Wink Estella as you want to make it really really glittery which is the look I like. Never can have too much bling on a card. Get that Wink Estella on there and then I think what I'm going to do is just spread this out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now we can put our card together. Just take this and attach it to the inside. All right, and now what I've previously done is I've attached my dimensionals to the back of the B. So we're just going to take off the backing pieces. It's a good, good way to use up those little teeny scraps. And then just decide where it is that we want the B to be. <laughs> I do hope you'll take the time to stop by my blog where you'll find some additional pictures and lots of information about this particular stamp or this particular card. And also, if you're viewing this in March 2017, I'm also offering a sale and I mean a free gift with purchase on my blog. And if you go out there, you'll be able to find all the information about how to obtain that free gift for your purchase. So now what I'm going to do is what I call little bee trails. We're just going to make some marks using a Stampin' Up! Basic Black Marker. There you go. Well, again, thank you so for so much for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed the card, and we'll see you next time. Bye!